Back in the old days, not everything was available like it is now. People were spread all across the globe, thinking that they were the only ones that existed on the planet. No knowledge reigned at the time. What were those first meetings like and how did that first meeting go? Just imagine how much blood had to be spilled just because of the diversity of people. What was it like in an era when two titans collided? So many questions, and history hides so many ancient answers. A meandering river passes beneath lush rocks, interrupted only by a lone navigator. A guy propels himself ahead in a boat designed for three people. The eight friends he started out with have been kidnapped by pale and bearded men, equipped with gleaming weapons and shields. The guy returns to his small village, informs them of the ambush, and then organizes a counterattack. His people are indigenous to the land. Long ago, their forefathers abandoned the European landscape, crossed prehistoric seas in vast tundra, and settled deep inside a place yet to be explored by mankind. The bridge between two hemispheres was severed as one era moved into the next, and each half of the globe diverged in mutual ignorance of the other. Millennia witnessed the birth and destruction of great empires, peoples and languages, prophecy and religion. After ravaging Europe and establishing colonies in Iceland and Greenland, the Vikings of Scandinavia have just ended tens of thousands of years of hemispheric alienation. They swiftly executed their eight kidnapped Native Americans. Thornvald Eriksson leads this little group of Norsemen. His brother Leif had already made ashore on the American coast, but encountered no native residents. The swarm of indigenous boats have arrived. The Vikings congregate on their ship for safety. A rapid rain of stonehead arrows beats against their raised shields. The siege ends after a while, and the indigenous people paddle away. But a deadly arrow protrudes from Thorval Eriksson's shivering side. He orders his troops to bury him in this distant land, with crosses at his head and feet. After carrying out the captain's final instructions, his soldiers returned to the American colony built by Leif Eriksson, before returning to Greenland in the spring. But there will soon be another commotion. A faraway iron toll and clouds of sedentary smoke. The water's edge is dotted with dragon boats. Thorfinn Karlsefni has arrived at the Leif Eriksson encampment with a company of almost 70 people, both Christian and pagan alike. It appears that heavenly grace has bestowed upon these seafarers with a beached whale from which to dine. They cozy up in their sod huts for the long winter. People come one day in the spring woods. Despite their initial fear of the Norse bull, they quickly unzipped their bags to deliver warm pelts from the surrounding wildlife and point towards the Norse weaponry. Carl Stephanie makes it obvious by cautious and bumbling attempts at communication that he will not trade his iron weapons. Instead, he offers their livestock's milk. The odd beverage excites the Native Americans, who trade all of their pelts for it. Then they vanish again. Carl Stephanie instructs his troops to construct a defensive barrier around the town. People return in great numbers in the fall, bringing additional pelts. During the tense reunion, one Native American tries to steal an iron sword and is killed by a Viking. The other indigenous people depart, but Carl Stephanie expects revenge. He sent his Norse warriors to lure them into the forest, where they were ambushed. Axe and shield collide with a tomahawk and an arrow. The Vikings scatter the Native Americans, killing many of them in the woods. Carl Stephanie's expedition spends the winter in the village before loading their ships with American grapes and pelts and departing. In 1492, the Vatican noted that no news from Greenland, the country at the end of the earth, had arrived in eight decades. That same year, Christopher Columbus visited the Bahamas. Scholars are divided on whether the Vikings ever reached continental North America until archaeologists in Newfoundland discovered mounded ruins in 1960. Excavations will unearth soot dwellings in iron forge and chopped wood that were recently dated in 1021. Here, the Ericsson brothers and Carl Stephanie's contemporaries may have traded with indigenous people and made voyages as far south as Maine or New York. However, after only a few years, the great Vikings abandoned their colony. 
In a lush land, they mysteriously retreated from their efforts to expand their kingdom westward. The rough charting of their excursions indicates that the Norse met the progenitors of the Biotic or Dorset Native Americans, a people whose resistance may have spelled the end of these early European colonies in the Americas. Thus concludes the story of Eric the Red. Despite the fact that the land was great, they could never live there in safety or without fear due to the native residents, so they prepared to leave and return home. The final piece of the Vikings in America puzzle is why they didn't remain. Why couldn't these fearless warriors last more than a few years in America? Why didn't they settle down? Many individuals have speculated as to why this is so. Perhaps they didn't bring enough people and supplies on their expeditions. Perhaps they were chased off by aggressive Native Americans. One of the prevailing speculations as to why the Vikings did not stay has to do with the weather. Life and Thorvald Eriksson, as well as Thorfinn Karlsefni, conducted journeys to the New World in the 11th century, where the climate was warmer. It was known as the Medieval Warming Period, and it resulted in warmer summers and less Arctic sea ice. But then it started to become chilly. The Little Ice Age, which began in the 12th century, caused temperatures to plummet and ice to build, rendering many marine routes unusable. It also made life tough for the Vikings in Greenland and Iceland. There is also evidence of food shortages and diseases. Iceland's population decreased from 150,000 to 50,000 between 1250 and 1700s. The Vikings only stayed in North America for a short time. What we know about it is legend passed down via sagas that might be historical fact, mythical fiction, or a mixture of the two. There is only one little settlement, a pin, and a coin in the physical evidence. But it's exciting to consider what would have occurred if they had stayed for a longer period. There are a lot of unexplained things, but it's up to us to discover them and present them to you. But one thing is certain, these fearless warriors had a very hard life, full of battles and wars, but they chose that kind of life for themselves, eager for the blood and glory they got through those wars. They believed in Valhalla, which was a paradise for warriors, and everyone's goal was to die with dignity in battle and end up there. If you like this video and want more content like this, hit that like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching.